What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be comparing two cameras from very different price categories. In the heavyweight class, we have this, the Canon EOS R6 with the RF 15 to 35 F 2.8 L series lens. And in the lightweight category, we have this guy, the Canon Rebel T100 with the 18 to 55 kit lens. So how does a camera one tenth of the price actually compare to its bigger brother? To do this comparison, I took both cameras to Pittsburgh on a Sunday morning and shot a few samples photos and that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. Now obviously these are two very different cameras priced for two different types of photographers but something that uh, was interesting and kind of why I thought this would be a fun review to make is the Canon T100 actually has an 18 megapixel sensor and as you guys know the Canon EOS R6 has a 20 megapixel sensor so these sensors are actually very similar in actual megapixel count. But before we get to the photos, I just wanna quickly run through the settings that I used on these cameras. So I shot with a base ISO of 100 because this should give us the maximum amount of dynamic range and the minimum amount of noise. I also shot with a shutter speed of one over 250th of a second to help minimize motion blur. I locked the white balance of each camera to 5600 Kelvin so we can tell any differences in colors. Lastly, I shot with an F8 aperture on both of these lenses because that is usually where a lens is its sharpest. Pretty much I tried to do everything I could to give this little T100 a fighting chance against the R6. On my Instagram earlier in the week, I did a A-B comparison posting photos from each of these cameras and asked if anybody could tell which one was the R6 and which one was the T100. And only one person was correctly able to identify the R6. And after talking to them, they said it was a complete guess. And so right now I'm actually gonna put up two comparison photos, an A and a B, and let's see if you guys can figure out which one is the R6. All right, so if you thought camera B was the R6, you were wrong. It's actually camera A, and if you had no idea which photo was shot by which camera, don't feel bad. Even on a 27 inch screen, the differences between these two cameras is actually very small. So behind me now, I have the photos pulled up from the shoot in Pittsburgh, and we're going to go through and I will point out some of the differences between these two cameras. Uh, off the bat, looking at this shot, you can just tell the R6 has much more uh, saturation and contrast in these highlight areas like this arch up here on the uh, bridge. On the T100, you can kind of see that's blown out. Just a little bit of that saturation is missing and a little bit of that contrast between the very bright and very dark areas. Uh, if we're looking at center sharpness of the images, I would say the R6 is just a little sharper than the T100, but overall pretty good. And if we go out here on the edges, you're gonna see a much bigger difference. So this is where the 15 to 35 really has edge to edge sharpness. The 18 to 55 kit lens on the T100 kind of falls off a little bit on the edge. Again, if you scroll up and you look at like this uh, church up on the hill, uh, the R6 is just holding a lot more detail. It's a, it's a little bit of a cleaner image. Again, these are ISO 100. So any type of noise is just, this, that's the sensor. And so a little bit more noisy here, uh, but overall pretty good image out of both cameras. Moving along, uh, this is the second image. Again, very difficult. Uh, from zoomed out to tell which camera it took what photo. They look pretty identical. You can see that contrast, the micro contrast that the R6 does better in these uh, bridge posts where the sun's hitting against it. If we, if we zoom way in, uh, you can see 
just a little more detail in the R6. So like this sign is uh, just a blurry yellow thing where this you can actually see a little bit more of it. Um, it is only 20 megapixels, so it is what it is. Uh, the foliage here, the trees in the background, just a little more detail in the R6 versus the T100. But overall, very similar um, dynamic range for this kind of shot. This is the third image. And a few things to note here is if we just kind of zoom in immediately up here, you can notice a pretty drastic change in detail. You, you don't see any of like the rivets anymore that are present in the R6. And these steel bars coming up, just a little more detail and a little cleaner out of the R6 versus the T100. If we zoom in down here, you see where that micro contrast and that, that difference in saturation is really evident in the R6 versus the T100. As far as sharpness, if we kind of go up, the, the sharpness is very similar. I would say the R6 is a little cleaner, a little sharper, but overall pretty good. And I was impressed at how the T100 managed to uh, handle this shot. Again, you're seeing a little bit of a uh, lens artifact here. So the light is camera left. It must have came across and clipped the front element of the 18 to 55 creating this. Uh, it takes a lot to flare the RF 15 to 35. This is the fourth and final edited shot. Everything else will be uh, just raw straight out of camera. Again, you're seeing this little uh, artifact lens flare. So the light is camera left again, coming across, clipping the glass, causing this. Whereas the RF, um, just it does take a lot to flare that lens. If we look under the bridge here, you're seeing that, uh, that contrast difference again, where the highlights and the shadows are just way more punchy and saturated and true to life, whereas in the T100, you're kind of losing a lot of that contrast here in the shadows. If we really look into the shadows here, the R6, very detailed, um, clean kind of shadows. This is ISO 100, so the sensors should be the cleanest down here. Just overall, a much cleaner image. You're seeing detail in all of these uh, rivets, whereas this is kind of washing out and getting a little more murky. Um, again, you can see individual rivets here, kind of missing that, that level of detail here. Now this is the first unedited raw photo out of camera. Uh, the sun was pretty much just above frame here. So I wanted to see how these lenses performed looking directly into the sun and you can tell the R6 has a lot of contrast and detail here. If we click here and look at the specular highlight, you can see the door of, of this boat shack is still true to color. It's uh, very dark, very contrasty, just like the building actually is. And the highlights are very bright. But here in the T100, you're getting a lot of just washout where the shadows are kind of milky and the highlights are, are bloomed just a little bit. If we go up here and look at the, uh, the arches, again, straight out of camera, so there's no uh, chromatic aberration correction on either of these lenses. You see the T100 has a lot of chromatic aberration issues. They can be fixed in post, but this is straight out of camera. The R6 is holding on to a lot more detail uh, especially if you look at this um, edge of the bridge. In the T100, there's pretty much no detail left. So it completely eliminated all of the rivets and the smaller details that you're seeing here in the R6. Now if we look further on down, again, you're seeing the individual steel bands coming off the bridge here, whereas in the T100, this has just become a pretty much a solid block of steel. 
And now there is only a two megapixel difference between these two cameras. So a lot of this comes down to just how the lens and the sensor performs. Now with this image, I wanted to shoot something that had straight lines to see how the lens distortion for each lens was. And so the R6 here on the left looks pretty much perfect. I mean, the lines are as straight as they were in person, uh, would require very minimal fixing in post. Here on the right, you have the T100 with a pretty significant bulge. Again, it can be fixed in post. I'm just looking at straight out of camera. Um, you can see this top line has a bow in it. This bottom line has a pretty significant bow in it. And then something else that I noticed is this lock is way more magenta than pink in person. And the R6 is looking very true to life and how I remember seeing the lock. Um, the T100 actually skewed that color to pink. So I was a little surprised being both Canon cameras, both fairly new. Um, the colors are actually pretty different uh, when it comes to this magenta pink color. So everyone loves a lens flare. And so I had to do a shot shooting directly into the sun to see how these lenses performed. And right off the bat, the T100, massive flare. You're getting this, uh, this artifacting here. And with the R6, you just get a little bit of a sunspot and no additional flare or ghosting or anything like that. Now, when you zoom in, you kind of see where your money's going with this L-series glass. You get a lot of contrast and detail, even with the sun being in the shot. In, in this kind of photo from the T100, you're losing a ton of detail and everything's kind of just washed out. Uh, it's not a beautiful shot, but I just wanted to demonstrate kind of the differences in color between the two cameras. So the shot on the left out of the R6 is way more true to life, how the sky looked the day I went and shot this. The T100 added a lot of aqua and saturation to this image that wasn't really there in real life. So I would say that the colors out of the R6 compared to the T100 are just way more true to life. And I was actually kind of shocked at how different the blues from each of these cameras looks. So for the ninth and final shot, I wanted to do a challenging shot. And so this is a very high contrast kind of environment. You got deep blacks under the bridge mixed with bright highlights up against the bridge. And straight out of camera, looking at this, you would say that each camera pretty much uh, performed the same. But if you take the same raw image and boost the shadows, um, this is what you get. And whenever you zoom in, you really start to see uh, the R6 shine against this cheaper T100. And so in the shadow here, you can kind of see where the paint um, kind of comes up and hits the concrete. Whereas in the T100, you're just not seeing any of that detail. So in your R6, you're seeing each individual rivet and in the T100, that information just isn't there. And again, when you're looking into the shadows here, there's just so much more detail and information in the R6 file compared to the T100. Now, when we zoom in to this section of the bridge that has your highlights mixed with your shadows, you're seeing that contrast that the R6 keeps and very well controlled highlights and a lot of information in the shadows. The T100 kind of just gets a little soft, a little milky, and just doesn't have that contrast and detail that the R6 has. Now, if you're just posting to social media, nobody's gonna notice rivets missing from the underside of a bridge. But if you are doing this professionally and you are printing or giving your photos to clients, having those small details matter. And that is kind of where the R6 is positioned as a professional camera and the T100 is an amateur camera. And it really just demonstrates in here the difference in level of detail that you're getting from these different sensors and lenses. And so neither camera is bad, but for professional work, the R6 is clearly the better choice. 
Now I hope I didn't cause any R6 owners out there to have buyer's remorse. Now the R6, in my opinion, is still well worth the price, but I thought this was just a fun comparison to show what an entry-level Canon camera can do compared to a more prosumer type camera like the R6. If you enjoyed the video and this kind of style of video, let me know down below, hit the like button, it helps out smaller channels like myself, uh, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.